All right, it's been forever since I've been out in the garage. At least it feels like it. Uh, I've got the heater running, so I apologize for the background noise. Um, got my differential carrier. I'm going to try to get this installed today. At least make sure I have enough washers and everything to get the backlash set properly. Maybe check our pattern. Maybe get it installed. Uh, who knows? We'll see how far we get. I was just checking. Um, my torque on these is supposed to be 55 foot-pounds, according to a website I found online. I had a guy at the shop already install these, because um, this ring is kind of a pain to get on here. And I was already checking them, and they're, they're already torqued, so we're good there. I already checked a bunch of them. All right, so um, let me check my notes, and let's get this thing put into the, uh, into the axle. I'll get you moved over here. All right, let's see if we can get this down in here without losing a fingertip. Edges are sharp. This thing is kind of heavy. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Bolt it up. <laughs> All right, I've got my original shims that go in here. All right. Well, there's room. It's just being stubborn. The bearing's crooked. So I'm going to lift this up just a tidge and take some of the weight off of this. So this bearing is just kind of tilted a little bit because it's on the race. So I'm just going to take a little bit of weight off of it. If I can. I don't want to cause any burrs tapping that down in there. So typically, you can get by with really close to the original shims. Um, and I can tell this is going to be really close. Um, there's supposed to be 8 thou preload, 4 thou per side, I believe. i got to look it up again. I seem to remember something about 4 thou shims on each side. Exactly what I wanted to do, but if it works, uh, um, ha! Huh. I don't think I'm gonna get by with putting that original one in here. So, what I've been watching is you put usually you put your shim in over here and your shim in over here. This one you want to leave the extra shims out of. So that you're all the way up against the gear. Um, so you have zero uh, backlash at all. Then you put your shims in over here on this side to get it tight, but not, uh, not no preload, just tight so that there's no backlash. Then you move shims to get your proper backlash. Uh, but I can't even get this one in here. And I know he's got the obviously has this carrier on here, right? This carrier is the same temperature as everything else out here. Um, so I don't think there's anything to do with the expansion at all, with it only being like 35 degrees out here. Um, I'm going to play around with it a little bit more because I know it's not perfectly straight. Uh, let me see if I can get it to sit down in there with the original shims. All right. Get your dial indicator set up on here. Make sure you have sufficient travel. Make sure it has travel that way also. And I've got about 17 thousandths worth of travel here. Uh, and I have the thinnest uh, stock shim, or the shims that came with the case. I'll show you. They're pre-stacked. I got the thinnest one I could on this side, and it's not quite thin enough. Uh, the originals wouldn't fit in there, so I went with a thinner one over here, and I've still, I've still got too much backlash. Uh, so I'm gonna have to take this one out and figure figure something else out go a little bit thinner on this side um, So I'll take this off of here, and let's figure something out So these bearings are adjustable for thickness and what it is 
show you here. <laughs> no, I can't get it apart. It's got a little thin film of oil on there. But it's a it's a large ring that fits in the pocket. Then it's some smaller ones, but they fit on the inside of a of a lip on here so they can't come off. And then you have you have washers or you have your shims that go on there. At the thinnest that this will go, um, I still have too much too much backlash. I, I, if I push it over all the way, um, I, mean, I can get it so there's no backlash. So I just got to get this a little bit a little bit thinner. So I got to find a different combination uh, to get this thinner. All right, so I've got it all the way up against here now. I've got a little bit more shim here. Remember, if you take shims out of this side, you have to put them in on this side. You want to keep it so this has no backlash this way at all. And right now. Obviously, I do because I just only took them out of this side. Um, what I'm not sure of, though, is if I've taken too many out of this side, um, that I'm, you know, like ro ro rolling up the gear. I guess it really doesn't matter at this point. I'll figure it out as I go because right now I, I know I have no backlash this way on the actual gears. Um, so I'm going to add a couple more shims over here. To get this one so that there's no backlash um, this way then I'll start playing with moving the shims until I get the proper backlash on the going this way on the actual gear so let me add some more shims to this side this should be pretty easy to do this is the original shim I think this is the thinner one so these original factory shims there is a chamfer on these and you want that to the outside to the casing if you do use them That doesn't feel like that took up any space. Oh, got way too much space. Yeah. Forgot to measure how much I actually took out over on this side. So I know how much to put in on the other side. All right, so I've got minimal backlash here. Um, it's about six thou, but I don't have a, uh, anything smaller. I do have a 10 thou shim, which will give me my 4 thou preload. Uh, so I'm just going to play with it. And then, uh, hopefully this doesn't affect my measurement, um, but there is a little bit of a, of a wobble here, so i got to keep that in mind. Ideally, you don't want that, but not having much of a choice right at the moment. All right, let's get this rearranged over here on the gear. I was a poet and didn't know it. There we go. Okay, so I got that on there. Still have some travel on my gear. Gotta make sure I'm all the way this way when I'm doing this. And actually, it's about seven thou. Maybe seven and a half thou backlash. Let me see if that's in spec. I think that is. Differentials.com says six thousandths to ten thousandths backlash. And seeing as how I have, uh, how I have somewhere around that, let me try to, uh, I'm going to take these shims out of here, clean them, take that shim out of there, clean it, and then... Uh, Remember, if I put more shims on this, if I put all the shims on that side, it's going to decrease the backlash. Uh, but I do need to have 4 thou preload. So I figured out I had a 6 thou gap. If I put a 10 thou shim in there, that should give me my 4 thou preload. Um, but I'm not sure. I have some other shims I could swap out over here uh, to, maybe, to, to maybe take that up. So that's what you got to play with. Um, you got to play around with it until you get a you know, just till you get the right combination. Um, you obviously you don't want this binding and you don't want this loose. Um, so it'd be very, very bad. Um, or it'll wear out faster. You'll have all kinds of issues. So you want to take your time setting this, which is what I'm doing because I've never done this before. I want to make sure I do it proper. So I, I'm confident that I have about six sal somewhere preload there. Um, let me pull this shim out of here, put a 10,000 shim in there for the, for the, for the preload, 
get that tap done in place and then see what the see what the backlash is after I put the tenth on that side um, if I don't like it if I'm below six uh, then I'll have to swap some shims out over here because I've got 10, 12, 15, 20 thousand shims uh, between them I should be able to, to shuffle it one way or the other a little bit alright so let me go ahead and put that shim in here and see what happens okay so I've got the stackable washers from the kit and I'm gonna put them in here see where we're at you really don't know until you try to be honest and then I'll have to clamp all this down check it again uh, once it's been torqued alright so I've got got that shim tucked down in there now and we've got six thou backlash got no movement this way because I've got the preload on there um, I think I have enough preload I'm gonna double check that one more time um, just to make sure with the we'll put the caps on here check again and we'll go from there all right I've got my bearings all picked out the ones I'm gonna use or the shims got my shims all picked out let's gonna give this a rotation real quick Put some, put some of this oil in here. Make darn good and sure I get some on the bearings before I get it completely assembled. All right, finally got a decent preload, and I've got right around six, six and a half thou uh, backlash. So I'm gonna put the bolts in here, tighten it down, and I'll come back. My battery's almost dead, also. I got my bolts down in here. I did not torque them yet. So you can see on this side over here, that's a shim pack. And like I was showing you, the smaller shims are in are inside the lip so that it, it that way it holds them all in. Same thing over here. The the cap will hold the the shims because they're on that shim pack and now they're underneath the cap and there's no way they can come off sorry about that so anyway uh, that is all together I just have to torque them down went back and checked my notes okay so I've got this on here this is the original gear uh, pinion and ring gear um, but I still have to check my pattern to make sure that everything I put together is correct so I have to do that yet I'm also going to check backlash uh, now that I have the caps tight but it feels like it's about the same. Um, so let's go ahead and check that. Uh, I'll check that wear pattern. All right, so it's the next day. Uh, put some of that grease on here, ran it back and forth a couple of times on the pinion, and uh, the pattern is down in the root decent. It's shifted a little bit to the inside, but there's not a lot I can do about that. The, uh, my pinion depth, that yoke fits so tight, I'm not messing with that. So. I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Um, I'm going to get some Loctite. I'm going to take this out um, and get some Loctite on this. Take my bolts out of here, Loctite both of those, put it back together, and then we can get the axles in here. Okay, so I got that bolt out, got the, got the Loctite on there. Loosen these up. The kit came with Loctite. So that's pretty awesome. Pretty sure I have enough for all four of these. If not, I have my own. Not even going to go flush with them. Oops. I don't want to be. I want to do that all by hand. Do that all by hand. Because <clears throat> I want to know how that feels going on there. Then I'll torque it. Then we'll be good. Where's my ratchet? I guess I can just use a torque wrench. Oh, that one's stuck right there.
All right, and this is still set at 60 foot pounds. Good enough. All right. All right, that's all done. Let's go ahead and get the axles in here, and I think we'll call that a, uh, a video for the week, a successful week. I might get underneath the car, do some scraping, that, but that'll most likely be uh, the next video. Um, i got to get that all prepped so I can actually put this axle in the car. Let's, uh, let's see how much more we can get done today. All right, got you moved over here. This is the axle that went on this side, and uh, this particular, these bolt-on axles, these uh, have a pattern to them, and it's actually tapered, and there's this pocket here. That pocket goes toward the ground, which on my transmission, the ground is going to be, the earth is going to be that way, and this taper, this is shaped the same as this washer on this thing, so uh, I'll show you here in a second. Oh, help if I take my... Take that out of there. Oh, let me wipe out the inside of that a little bit better. All right, let's try this again. Uh, hopefully my headlight doesn't cause any problems here. Uh, anyway, I've got cleaned that out in there. I don't know why there was any gunk in there to start out with, but must have missed it. Um, I already got this most of the way in, and it's lining up with the... There we go. That's literally it. Now, this just... This guy here really can't see him. I'm going to move you over here. This guy here, you just have to line up. And uh, it really only goes on one way. And like I say, I know the ground, the earth is that way. You want that bottom part hanging there in case any moisture were to get in here, it, you know, it would, uh, it would roll out. Uh, these bearings are sealed. So once I press this on here, uh, once I bolt this on here, uh, should be good to go. Then I can touch up this paint if I want. And, uh, we're golden. I'll have to do the axle on the other side. Do the same thing over there. I won't, uh, won't make you watch that twice. But just pretty simple is, is uh, putting the you know putting the axle in it. It's it's turning the gear down there, so it's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, let me find the bolts for this and uh, get this thing bolted up. These bolts that go on the hold this bearing in or hold the axle in. Are, uh, there's no seal or anything on here so that bearing is a sealed bearing and that's actually what seals the end of the end of the axle um, these bolts these have like this toggle on here um, I can show you on the other one so these uh, the bolt that's what the head of the bolt looks like. So it just kind of toggles on there and it can't spin because the axle's in the way. So you don't have to hold the head. And I'm just running these on here evenly right now. Get them on all the way. And then we'll be good. I'll have to look up, see if there's a torque spec for these. I think I could get a torque wrench in here if I wanted to, though. Pretty much it just kind of smashes down and just kind of sandwiches that, uh, that bearing in there. Um, these nuts have like a, uh, a crimped end, so those are not coming off. All right, let's get the other, other axle in. I'll get that end cleaned out and get that one in there. And then we'll put the cover on this thing. And then we can be done with the axle uh, for the week. Well, so much for planning ahead. Um, I was going to go put the cover on here. And uh, for some reason, I don't have the gasket. And I don't remember ordering one, so I probably just don't have it. I looked around. I thought maybe I misplaced it. But I'm pretty sure I just didn't order one. So um, I got the axles in. Um... I'll touch up that paint later. Uh, we're, we're good to go. Um, 
I'll have to get the cover on later this week, get the underneath of the car cleaned up. I think we're going to call that a, call that a video for the week. So really appreciate everybody following along on the GTO build. Uh, it's really appreciated. Uh, just trying to trying to document what I'm doing and you know bring some other people along. If, uh, if you like what you're seeing, please like, subscribe, share with some friends. Uh, again, uh, appreciate everybody, you know, comments and stuff. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a funny one that someone commented last week because I had I had put this distributor gear on here backwards, okay, and a couple of people had caught it, and it is on there correctly now, but uh, I didn't end up showing that, but I did uh, I did update the thumbnail to show you that I actually did put it on here correctly. So um, again, I appreciate that feedback. I was so concentrated on getting that stupid roll pin in there that I didn't even pay attention to the fact I had it backwards. So anyway, thanks again, everybody. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video, all right? Thanks.